Let's open the next notebook. So what you're going to look at is Data Products Part 2 Solutions. And I'll be going through the live version. As before, we have our goals up here. We're going to start with Stage 1 Data Products. So this is where all of the detector corrections get removed. Stage 2, that's where um, you start getting calibrated individual exposures and slightly more specific. So we have imaging and spectroscopic data products. And then stage two is also where the WCS information gets attached. So we'll talk about that in more detail. This is the organization of our notebook. You also have bonus information at the bottom about JWST associations that you can dig into more if you'd like. And as before, you have your intro, your resources, reminder about all these different extensions that you might encounter. And so we're talking about stage one. So you're going to be looking at rate and rate ints in stage two, which, oh, I forget when I double click. So you're looking at cal and cal ints.fits, and that's what you'll see in all of your files over here. Go ahead and do these imports. You have some more convenience functions to create images, create a slit image. So stage one, um, like Carl was talking about, all data goes through stage one, regardless of the instrument or, mo or mode, um, except for some very specific cases. Um, it's called Cal Web Detector 1. We have the links and information for you here. I also have a link to a table that you might find useful as you're starting to explore the read the dots. This contains a full list of the data product types and their units as they come out of the pipeline. It's a little bit more complicated than we want to go through today, but I just wanted you to know that's linked in all of the sections below. So, as we mentioned, the input to stage one of the pipeline is our raw, uncalibrated file. This was extracted directly from the software Read the Docs, so you also have this in the Read the Docs. This also tells you which model is associated with all these different data product types. So that's pretty convenient when you want to try to play around with some of these data products. And the output for stage one, the standard output is a rate.fits file and a rateins.fits file. The rate.fits file is integration averaged and the rateins is for individual integrations. Even if you only have one integration, you'll, you'll get it and you'll get a rate ints file with the one integration separated out. We also highlight some interesting optional data products. So this is not saved by default, but for those of you who decide to download the pipeline and run it yourself, you have the option to save out some more files if you're interested. And you can find all of the optional data products in the software Read the Docs. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of our slope images that we talked about to the right place. We're going to call this rate image. We're going to use our data models. And the data coming out of the pipeline is going to be 2D because we have now fit a line to our ramp after all the corrections are made to get a count rate image. We're using the image model here. And the name of my file, um, I did not mention that up here. So you'll notice because of how box is. So this first entry is the box link, and then the second entry is the actual file name. So when I'm saying rate file brackets one, I'm just grabbing this file name for you. Okay, and so let's also load in our rate image. So this uses a cube model because the rate ints image is not 2D since it's integration specific. And let's check out the structures. You'll notice some things are a little bit different in these data products. So once you get through stage one processing, you still have these standard arrays, but you'll notice that the data units are changing. So we no longer just have DN, we have DN per second. And you also have some variance arrays. You have the variance due to Poisson noise and variance due to read noise. So let's look at the shape of the data. So we have rate image data.shape. This is 2D, so now we just have the full detector. Similarly,
I mentioned for the radiance, they're special and the integration is saved separately. So let's create an image of our rate. Image. And now this looks much better. So you have the stars and we have dn per second. And let's take a look at how the metadata has changed for these data products. So now you have some more entries in the metadata. So cal step tells you which calibration steps were applied along with which version of the software. Additionally, if you start to explore the pipeline in more detail, it tells you which calibration file was used, for instance, for the saturation limits, the super bias. <clears throat> and so this information um, changes slightly as you go through the pipeline and more information gets added. If you're using the FITS method, um, in order to indicate that a calibration step was performed, FITS uses S underscore. So for instance, if I want to see what, uh, figure out the FITS keyword here for the linearity correction, it tells me I go to meta.calstep.linearity. Let's just double check. Don't remember how to figure out the units. So we have B unit data. So I want to print meta dot B unit data. And it tells me that my data is now in the end per second. Let's talk about stage two. Um, this is where the paths through the pipeline start to become more mode specific. So here you have uh, an imaging pipeline and a spectroscopic pipeline. So we'll take a look at the um, standard imaging data products and we'll switch to talking about spectroscopy. So for stage two, um, this ap applies additional corrections. Um, and so what you get out of this is a fully calibrated individual exposure. The um, standard exposures that come out of this pipeline don't have the, um, they're not distortion corrected yet. That happens in stage three but you do get a, a quick look data product um, that you can use here as well. One other thing to mention is that um, time series images go through this pipeline as well, um, but they are, they have different steps applied um, and this is all under the hood. It's determined by the exposure type, but um, depending on whether or not you have a time series image, different steps might get applied. So the input to stage two will be our rate or our rate ints image. And the output data products here are now going to be cal.fits or calints.fits. Um, same as we talked about before, you have integration averaged or integration specific. You have the quick look product. So here, the um, i2d.fits, i for imaging. Um, and so this is the quick look product that I just mentioned. You also have uh, an optional background subtracted data product at this point in the pipeline. So what you'll see in MAST is typically um, these two files here. Let's take a quick look at our calibrated image. Right. Here, this is cal file. The name is in entry and calimage.info as before. <clears throat> so here you have some new information. You have the pixel area. You also have a new variance array due to the flat field correction. And finally, you will also notice that you're coming out of stage two. Your data products now have different units. Your units here are Megajansky's perturbation coming out of um, the stage two pipeline. Similarly for spectroscopy, um, the stage two spectroscopic pipeline is our Swiss army knife. So we have a lot of different spectroscopic modes for JWST. So there's a lot of potential data products that you're going to get here. Um, and as with imaging, this is uh, also includes a, a time series specific path through the pipeline. So the input here is our rate or our rate ints as before. And now the output, you have your cal or your cal ints. 
but you'll notice that you have a lot of different data models that um, could potentially be used. And down here specifically for near a near spec bright object uh, time series data or near cam TSO grism data, which is a slit model, or for near spec fixed slit and moss or wide field slit list, you have a multi slit model. And so the, the multi slits are just an array of individual slit models um, for a particular extracted source or slit. You had an I2D.fits data product for imaging. You also have an S2D quick look product or an S3D if you have IFU data. You also have a uh, quick look 1D extracted spectral data product, uh, X1D or X1D.ints. And you also have the option to get background subtracted data if you are manually running the pipeline. Let's switch to using a different data model here. So we have a, now a calibrated wide field slitless exposure, and that will use a multi slit model. Let's load this into a multi slit model. See what this looks like. Here you'll notice it's generally the same, except now you have slits down here. So you have one of these for each of the slits or the, the traces that we saw in our exercise image. So let's choose one of them to examine it a little bit more closely. We're going to call it SNUM. here I'm accessing dot slits that's here and I'm choosing one particular slit and I'm looking at all of the metadata for it so here you can see you have the units you have the photometry information you have all of the WCS here this is the WCS transform that we'll talk about shortly and we can print the source ID for our slit We can also print this info dot spectral order. So here you see this is our source and it's spectral order one. Alternatively, you could get the source ex uh, the source position. position on the detector, and then you can look at the WCS information. We'll choose pixel 100 and to look at. Here you have your RA in your deck, you have your wavelength and your spectral order, and that's all in the WCS. Everybody with me so far? Yes. Yes. Thanks. So let's take a look at what this slit looks like. Let's see. It's very tiny. It's only 10 pixels. Uh, before, we had 2,000 pixels on each side for our whole detector. You have this little tiny trace. You can see it in here. This is our object, our source, and the spectral order. Okay. Now, what about a different data product? Let's switch to the x1d.fits file. So this is, um, we're going to start by looking at this using fits, so you can kind of get a sense of what is inside of this exposure, and then we're going to switch to using the data model because it makes it a little bit easier. Let's do fits.info, our x1d file. 
here, when you read in the x1d.fits file, you'll see you have a whole bunch of extensions. And as you get more and more sources, um, you have even more extensions. And so what this corresponds to, we'll go ahead and get the headers. We have the headers for this extension here, the third extension. So for each extension, it's for one, uh, one source and one spectral order. So instead, what makes our life a little bit easier is to use data models. And in this case, you would use a multi-spec model. So you can see what this looks like. So here, all of that's contained in this spec array here. So all of this is now in spec. As an example, let's just take a look at the size of spec. You'll see that it's 13 because we have 13 different sort, 13 sources and spectral orders here. Similarly, if I want to use spec, so for uh, extension three that we were using before, since we're zero index, we're going to use two. I'm going to grab the source ID for the, sec uh, the third split and the spectral order, just, just to show you. And we can see that's source 618 and spectral order one. So those are some of the main data products that come out of stage two. Um, 